Um, so last week, we were talking about war. Remember that? This means war. And I was going to, I told you I would finish the story about the pastor and the shaman this week. So last week, the story, I'll, be, I'll start again for those who you weren't here. Dr. Cho, who is a pastor in South Korea, pastors uh, 750,000 people in multiple churches. So they've started churches all over South Korea. Okay. So when he was beginning his church, he um, put his tent up on land that a few, a little while later, a few weeks later, a shaman came and told him, you can't put your tent on this land because this land belongs to us. Now, it didn't technically belong to them, but they said that it did belong to them. And he said, if you stay, I will kill you and I will burn down your church, which was a tent. So um, Dr. Cho said, I'm not easy to kill because I have a God who protects me. And the shaman said, well, we will kill you. Don't worry. Our God is powerful. And Cho said, I serve a living God. And he protects me. I am not going to be easy to kill. So the shaman said, I'll tell you what. I'm going to give you 30 days. And within the, in, in, in 30 days, there is a woman that is down in the village. She had a baby. But from that, she's the wife of a farmer. She had a baby. And when, after she had the baby, she became paralyzed. And she's never had any strength to get up. No medical doctor, no one, even the shaman's chance. No one has been able to heal this woman. He said, if your God, who you claim is living, can heal this woman in 30 days, then we'll give you the land. But if he doesn't, then you have to leave and we keep the land. So Dr. Cho said, okay, I'll do that. And so he began the prayer. The very first day, he heads to her house, and her house is on this trash heap, which they do that a lot in third world countries. You say, why? Because they get their dinner out of the trash. They get their clothing out of the trash. This is helpful to them, so they just build a house right on it. Needless to say, it doesn't smell nice. And it doesn't look nice. So him and a few of his saints went over. They cleaned her house immaculately. And they fed her a very beautiful, delicious, nutritious meal. And they started talking to her about Jesus and salvation. But this woman wouldn't hear a word because she had been pre-warned by the shaman. That had been her religion her whole life. So the shaman had warned her, do not come to this man. He's evil. He's wicked. He's trying to take away our property. So they, the, after that, he went back home, and he prayed five hours. And he decided, I'm going to pray five hours on my knees until this is done. Now, you say, why on your knees? Has anyone, has anyone stayed more than, like, 30 minutes on your knees? <laughs> like, that's its own sacrifice, sacrificial offering unto the Lord. Right, So that as, as a sacrifice, he prayed for five hours on his knees, and he prayed, and he went back the next day, nothing's happening. He prays for 10 days, five hours a day on his knees. Nothing happens. He's going every single day to her house to talk to her about Jesus, to feed her nutritious meal, and she won't listen. She won't give them the time of day nothing's breaking through. He does it for 15 days, nothing. He does it for 20 days, nothing's happened. He does it for 25 days, nothing's happening. He doesn't get a word from the Lord, pray harder, pray longer, do more, do this, that. He gets nothing, nothing. On the 29th day, 
he prays again. And he goes to talk to this woman. And as he walks past the shaman and his believers, they're laughing, they're chanting, they're rejoicing. Victory, victory. And he's so grieved in his spirit. He's thinking, Am I, is, this, is this way it's going to end? So he gets there, and he, this woman won't hear a word of what he says on the 29th day. So on the, thir- on the 30th, he goes again, and he says, he appeals to her, the plan of salvation, Jesus loves you, nothing's happened on the 30th day. That night, he says, I'm going to pray all night long, because on the next daybreak is when it's going to be theirs. He, does, he goes home on the 30th day, he he doesn't want to eat a bite. He doesn't eat a bite. He fasts that day. And he's crying and he's praying to the Lord all day and all night. And he's saying, oh, God, oh, Father, is this how this is going to end? Is this, is this way it's going to happen that the shaman's going to win? Uh, what about our ministry? Raise this woman up. What about our church? Our tent church is going to be destroyed What is going on? Are you not a God that's alive? And he said that nothing happened. So he he falls into a trance at about midnight. And in the trance, he hears this very eerie organ music. And he looks toward where the music is coming, and there is a snake, a huge snake, with massive teeth, And, but this, at first, the snake is the face of the most beautiful woman he's ever seen in his life. So he hasn't seen the teeth yet. Most beautiful woman he said he's ever seen in his life. The head of a serpent. And he, and this serpent comes up to him and says, look, can't we make a coalition? Can't we just work together? And he said, you're not human. You're an animal. You're an it. Humans aren't allowed to marry animals. He said that was the best he could think of in that moment. (laughs) He said, humans aren't to marry animals. She said, we can make a good, we can make a good coalition and work together if you'll marry me. Just marry me. He said, humans aren't to marry animals. And he said at that moment, the face turned into the ugliest demonic face he had ever seen with long, massive teeth. And he said at that moment, it began to come to bite his head off. And fear came all over his body because he recognized he wasn't strong enough in himself to bring the snake back. So he's fighting it with all he can do in this trance. And he finally manages to get the word out. Jesus, oh, son of God, help me. And he said in that moment, for the first time, he saw fear strike into this beast's eyes. So he said he, started, he got stronger from just saying that, and the snake got weaker. And he said, Jesus, Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. And every time he said it, the snake got weaker until it fell on the floor. And when he opened his eyes, there was a real snake on the floor. He picks it up. He goes outside to throw it outside his house. And as he goes to throw it out, he's a woman's running to his house and says, Oh, pastor, the whole village is here to see that the shaman won. And he looks, and a whole crowd of people are coming. And he stares at him, and the front one, um, the front looks a lot like the woman who was paralyzed with the baby. So when they get up close to the house, he throws the snake to him. He said, that's your God. That's who you've been worshiping. This God is dead, and my God is alive. But he said, as they were coming, he was also saying to God, God, are you not stronger than a shaman? Are you not more powerful that this, this, our church is taken away? Oh, what's happening? He's saying all the things you and I would say. In this situation. But after he throws him the snake. And it falls dead at their feet. He looks in the front 
woman that's leading them looks like the twin of the woman he's been praying for. And he said, do you have a twin sister? And she said, no, quit fooling around. This is me. I'm healed. He said, what are you talking about? She said, you came to me last night at midnight, and you walked in front of our house, and you said, rise up. She said, and I got up. I'm totally healed. And he's trying to think. He says, I, 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 I wasn't there. That's when I was ha having the trance with the snake. But he didn't tell her that yet. He just said, but, but I didn't come. She said, quit fooling around, pastor. You came to my front yard, and you called my name and told me to rise up. And she said, I rose up. I'm healed. I'm healed. And, he's, and he, right then, the Holy Spirit finally spoke to him. And he said, the angel of the Lord came and spoke to her. That looked like, We made him look like you. And um, she, she said that not only did you come, but when you came, the Holy Spirit came all over me. And I started speaking in other tongues right then. And she starts testifying to all the villagers behind her. Now, this pastor, to this day, he owns hundreds of churches. He's even opened many churches in America because he feels a burden for America. Thank you for that. But he said that um, he still owns that tent on that property today as an act to never forget how God saved their very first tent church. Now, what I want to say to you, I cannot tell you the stories, though I'll try, of the times that people have persevered without one sign in a big sacrificial thing that the devil didn't even start trembling until he fell. So I want you to remember that this facade the devil keeps, that he's bigger than God, that he's bad, he's, you can't bring him down. Every time you see that mountain in front of you, I want you to remember one thing. The Bible gave me the scripture this week. The Lord gave me the scripture, a rhema, that said, I will break the mountains under my feet will be like dust. And this, the week before, he had, he had shown me the verse in the scripture that said, let your word out of my mouth be like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. Now, let me tell you something right now. That is quoted multiple times, multiple hours of my day. Let your word out of my mouth be like a hammer. Have any of you ever heard about K2? The mountain is filled with limestone. Sometimes they go to hammer their little screw in that's supposed to hold them up, and a rock fall starts. 50, 100 huge stones. Sometimes it kills people. When you're praying the word of God over your mountain, I want you to see it fall. As God's word proceeds out of your mouth, it's like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. And then God shakes the earth until that mountain is going to be dust under your feet. Just do more. Pray harder. Don't stop. Don't believe the lie of the enemy to give up. But nothing's looking like it's going to change. It's all going down if you know how to be persistent in prayer.